Greetings, folks. It's Professor Fiori back once again. Today, we are going to talk about bass and guitar pickups in Faraday's Law. Yay! First thing I want to say, a guitar pickup, a bass pickup, essentially the same thing, but they're not microphones. They are not microphones. Remember that. They work on a completely different idea. Prove it to you. Bass guitar. Two pickups. We can play the bass guitar hooked up to a little amp. Okay? So. Now, scream into the pickups. All you hear is just me. Nothing from the amplifier. So how do these things work? Stay. Okay. First thing we have to talk about is Faraday's Law. And this gets into one of my favorite topics, which is magnets. Everybody loves magnets. Magnets are really cool devices. It's the next step away from magic. It's better than magic because it's real. So we start with the idea of a magnetic field, something you might have seen before, maybe a little school experiment. And they would say, okay, we're gonna take a bar magnet, north, south, okay? And what we do is maybe we'll sprinkle some iron filings on top of this thing. And what we'll see is a pattern. All right, we'll see these patterns of these magnetic lines, and I'm, I'm putting dotted lines inside the magnet, but they're around the device, you know, both sides of the, of the magnet, and I'm just going to draw three loops on each side. But in fact, you know, there's a billion D7 of these things, and it's three-dimensional. You know, I'm sort of doing a slice here, but if you had a real bar magnet, you know, these magnets would be coming out into the space and behind the board and this whole thing, right? So these are what we call lines of force. And they don't cross. Okay? Now, you can distort the lines of force if you have some material where the lines of force are easier to establish than in the air. And the term we use for this, the, the uh, quantity we use for this, is something called permeability. If I have a high permeability material, like let's say iron, it's very easy to establish magnetic lines of force in it. And we can therefore distort the magnetic field. So if I had a piece of like sheet steel or you know cast iron for that matter right which I'll just stick out here like so and I'll just shade it to indicate this is not a magnet right but it's what we would call a high permeability material right the lines of force are easy to establish air is lousy in terms of being able to establish lines of force what would end up happening is, and I'm going to change color of my pen to do this, these lines of force, instead of doing what they did before, since it's easier to establish through here than it is through the air, they're not going to go through the air like they did before. Instead, they're actually going to travel out through this material. All right, something like that. And as this moves, right, if you distort the position of this, you actually distort the magnetic field. Okay? All right. So where are we going with this? This leads us into Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Basically what it says is, if you have a magnetic field and you have a conductor, in other words, you have a wire, and there's motion between them such that the wire is cutting through the lines of force, then a voltage will be induced in that conductor. And the faster this works, in other words, the greater the rate of change, the bigger the voltage. And we can 
sort of maximize the sensitivity by instead of just using a single conductor, we can make a coil of wire makes everything more sensitive. So a good way to sort of visualize this is to just imagine um, a magnet with a gap. And this is a fairly common sort of thing on um, loudspeakers, for example. Faraday's law, as it turns out, we'll see in some other videos, is applic applicable to things like uh, dynamic microphones, moving coil microphones, and loudspeakers, dynamic loudspeakers. Along with things like uh, motors and generators, you know, which are pretty important in modern society. Uh, but, you know, as audio kind of people, mm, you know, we want to know about guitar pickups and loudspeakers and so forth. Anyway, so let's just say we have magnetic material over here. This, this is, our, I'm not going to draw the whole thing, right? So this is part of a magnet. Maybe it's like a big U-shaped kind of affair. You know, this comes off like this. So, you know, this is the gap. Well, lines of force are going to be established through here, right? If this is a magnet. And I'm just going to draw a handful of them coming across, right? And my little 3D thing. Now, I take a conductor. So I'm just going to use my pen as a conductor. Because, you know, why not? If I can get this to move the conductor through these lines of force, then a voltage will be induced inside this conductor. Okay? What I want to do is maximize this effect. So to do that, I would run this perpendicularly. Okay? Now, here's a really cool thing. Okay, like, I don't want to run it this way with the lines. I want to run it across the lines. I want to cut the lines of force. Okay? So, it doesn't matter if the conductor's moving or if the lines are moving. In other words, I, I could have a stationary conductor and I can get all these lines to move. Either way, there's relative motion and the end result is we induce a voltage. And like I said, instead of just using a single conductor, we would typically use a coil of wire. So I have multiple conductors basically and that will make the system more sensitive we can get a bigger voltage this way, okay? All right, so what does this have to do with my electric or bass guitar um, pickup? Well, let's take a look at a pickup. What is a pickup, right? A bass guitar pickup, an electric guitar pickup. Well, this is a pickup that came out of uh, a Fender J bass, right? A jazz bass. Um, basically, this is what you see sticking out of it, right? They come in lots of different shapes and sizes, right? So on this guy, you know, the, the pickups are physically much larger, right? Two pickups here. But basically, here we go, right? I'm not going to take this apart. Come on, let's get serious here. This was an upgrade. I upgraded a pick, uh, pickup on a guitar a few years back. And this is the original that came out of it. And you can see the, the two leads that are going out to the controls. But if you take the cover off, come on. There we go. We can see the good stuff, right? So inside here, there's a magnet, fairly strong magnet. And these are the pole pieces for the magnet. As you saw on that other base, they sit underneath the strings, right? So there's going to be a string going across here on each of these four. And here we have some very, very fine wire. So this wire is maybe about as thick as a human hair. And you might have 5,000 turns of wire sitting around this thing, right? So there's a, quite a bit of wire here. And that actually creates quite a bit of resistance for those of you that have an electrical engineering background, there's a lot of inductance as well. There's a high resistance and a high inductance. So this makes for a challenging source. This is one reason why you have to load an electric guitar, electric bass with this kind of passive pickup with a fairly high impedance amplifier. Because the source impedance of this thing is actually pretty high and frequency sensitive. So anyway, how does this little beastie work? Well, what ends up happening is you establish 
this magnetic field. Okay. And just as we did before, I'm going to draw this oh, it's kind of on its side. So here's my magnet and here's my magnetic field, my lines of force out here. I'm only going to draw the top side because the bottom side, as it turns out, is not going to make any difference. And in here is coil of wire. Okay. I'm not going to draw all the details on this because more importantly, I have the string. Sitting above this is the guitar string or the bass string. And guess what? These are metallic strings. And they will, when you pluck them, when they vibrate, they will distort this magnetic field. What does that do? Well, as I pluck the string, right, it moves up, it moves down. Think of this like that you know, chunk of iron I drew initially. That distorts this magnetic field, the black lines. They move. Well, down here is the coil of wire. So guess what ends up happening? You effectively, instead of having the wire move through the stationary magnetic field, now we have a stationary coil and the magnetic field is moving. But like I said, all we really care about is relative motion. So the conductor, the coil, winds up cutting magnetic lines of force and it cuts them in accordance with the vibration of the string. All right, so the string is basically a high permeability material. So it moves out here, and what happens? All those lines of force, it's easier to go through the string than it is in the air, so that whole thing moves up. And then as the string comes back down, and it's normal vibration, right, the lines of force go with it, and this just keeps on going on back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So the rate at which this changes, right, the speed at which it changes, is essentially the vibratory uh, frequency of the string. So that's the exact same thing that winds up coming into the coil. That voltage reflects what the vibration of the string is. Beautiful. All right. Now, if you don't believe this, because this maybe sounds a little bit like magic, right? But as Arthur C. Clarke once said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Okay. Try to take some non-permeable or low permeability material, you know, like, like a rubber band. Stick a rubber band um, on your guitar and pluck that and see if you get sound. Guess what? You won't. You won't get any more extra sound than, you know, when you scream into the thing. All right? So, we have this magnetic field. We have a string. The string vibrates when you pluck it, when you play it. That distorts the magnetic field. The magnetic field also goes through the coil of wire that's in the pickup, right? This stuff, right? The copper stuff. That induces a voltage in the coil that reflects what the string is actually doing, right? So the string alters the magnetic field. The magnetic field induces a voltage in the coil that is reflective of what the string is actually doing, and we send that signal off to the amplifier. Bingo! There you go. You have an electric guitar, an electric bass pickup. Now, the sound of that pickup will depend on the construction. How many turns do you have? What gauge is the wire? What's the magnet made out of? Where is this thing located on the body of the guitar or the bass? That actually makes a difference. We're going to take a look at that in another exciting video. And I'll see you then.